Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. My name is Haley Hayhurst. I'm your host and the owner of Espresso Podcast Production, a full service podcast agency specializing in editing, marketing, and strategy. Today, I have a great episode with Deb Porter. She started this very unique business called Hold, which stands for Hearing Out Life Drama. Now, Deb was going through a lot of emotional situations years ago that she talks about in this episode with health issues from her family members and just a lot going on. And all she needed people to do was just sit there and listen to her and be like, yep, that sucks. But instead, as I'm sure we all do get from time to time, she got a lot of unsolicited advice, which... I know for me, it can really run out my patience very fast. And so Deb had the idea of creating her business, Hold, which she helps people talk about life drama and just she lets them get it all out and she just listens. So it's a very unique business that she has. She followed me on Instagram and I saw what she was doing and I was like, wow, that is so unique. I want to listen to her. I want to learn more. And so I'm very grateful that she came on the podcast to talk about starting a niche business and how she marketed it because she wasn't able to run ads because her business is so niche. So she had to look into other ways of actually marketing that were more personal and hands on. So she gives some action tips about that. But One of the best parts of this episode is she gives a lot of active listening advice. So if you have a podcast, if you have a business, if you have meetings, if you want to be a better relationship partner, whatever it is, active listening is one of the key things that you can improve. And it's just like writing, you know, something that you have to focus on and enhance and work on to enhance. It's just like any skill. You need to practice it to get better. And so Deb has a lot of free resources, and she also just came out with a course, a paid course, that helps with just this. So if you find that you keep having discovery calls with potential clients that end up going nowhere, or you keep getting into maybe arguments with your partner because they don't think you're listening or you have podcast interviews or your podcast host and you just feel like the interviews are not as motivational or as empowering as you're hoping, it probably bubbles down to your active listening skills because it's something different to be able to just like respond to someone than to understand them. And really, we all want to be understood. And so that is why I think that every person should enhance their active listening. It is just something that will help you in so many different places in life, from personal to business, to sell yourself, to really everything. So this episode is full of so much, so much value. And I cannot wait for you to listen. Definitely check out the show notes because Deb has a lot of links to share about free resources, ways to connect with her, and then also that course that I mentioned. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to Deb or I. My Instagram is Espresso Podcast Production. I'm also on TikTok at Espresso Pod Production. So come connect with me on either of those places, and I would love to hear more from the listeners of what you're loving, what you want to hear more of, just kind of your experience of tuning in each and every week and listening to the conversations I'm having with different entrepreneurs. All right, let's get right into this episode. Hey, Deb, thank you so much for joining me on the Employee to Boss podcast. I am so excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me, Haley. It's lovely to be here. Yeah, so we connected because I think you followed me on Instagram and I was looking at your business and I was like, I it's very rare that I see like a different type of business that I've never heard of before. And so I thought it was so cool, messaged you immediately and it was like, Deb, please tell me everything that you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I think I said, let's have a conversation because I won't type all that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so... If you want to start off by telling us a little bit about your journey from an employee to what you do now and a little bit about what you do now as well. 
Sure. So my business is actually, as you mentioned, different. What it is, is it's hold hearing out life drama and it's a confidential listening service. And so what I'm about is both actively listening and teaching active listening to others. And my journey to get here is kind of twisty and turny. It's a bit of a long story. You want all of it? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. So, so it started out, I was 19 and I felt like a really strong call to help people. Like that's really what I wanted to do. And I was involved in the United Methodist Church. And so I thought that meant church ministry. So I went, finished my undergrad and went to seminary and got a 96 hour master divinity degree with a specialization in care and counseling, because I knew I really wanted to help people. And so um, three years into my full-time, my first full-time charge, a family member came out to me and that was a really difficult time because at the same time that happened in the United Methodist Church, this was 22 years ago now, at the same time that happened, church colleagues were being stripped of their ordination and being put on church trial for performing same-sex marriages. And when my family member came out, I it gave me pause. And I said, if somebody comes to me, what am I going to do? And my answer for my family member was, of course, I'm going to marry them. And then as soon as I said that, I'm like, of course, I'm going to marry whoever it is. It doesn't just have to be my family member. That's who I am. I believe love is love. And so uh, I realized I couldn't stay in the church. And so I left. My daughter was one about that time. And so I focused on being a mom. And about the same time we had her, we discovered that uh, my husband had a genetic illness. And um, further on down the line, he became very, very, he became critically ill. And I spent eight years as a caregiver. And it was during that time, those caregiving years, that the family and friends, they wanted to help me so much. You know, they wanted to be there. But active listening isn't taught in schools. And it really isn't. And so they didn't have a basis to really know how to help. And what I really needed was somebody to just listen without giving advice, without saying, well, have you thought about this? I just, I just needed somebody to go, boy, that sucks. And then just stop there and, and hear what I had to say. So already during that time, I think the seeds of hold were like percolating. Um, and then I was working at a funeral home. I really, really, really loved that job. And they changed the compensation package that they were offering. And so $25 gift card wasn't going to cut it to pay my mortgage. So I was reading the book Think and Grow Rich at the time by Napoleon Hill. There's a chapter in there on imagination. And so I was like, ah, if I could do anything, what is it that I'd really, really, really love to do? And what came to me is, I just want to listen. I just want to listen and, and care for people in that way. And so that's how Hold came to be. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey. And I love that because I think that a lot of people are really held back by, oh, I want to do this, but that's not going to work out or that's not like typical. And so it sounds like a lot of things led up to starting your business. Did you have any fear around starting a business that is so unique? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, especially because I was uh, 49, almost 50 when, when I'm jumping into this. I'm like, yeah, this is a little crazy. Um, but it just felt really right. And it felt like it had the correct momentum. And, you know, I was very lucky that I talked to my mom at the time. And I said, I, I have this idea. What do you think? And yeah. And she said that she'd help me get it started. And so financially, awesome. she supported me while I've, I've gotten it going. So, but was it, yeah, there's a, a lot of fear. It's very different. And, and that has made it a particular challenge because not everybody understands what it is that I do. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally, I totally feel that. And active listening is a skill that I think a lot of people lack where <laughs> I think, as a podcaster doing so many interviews, it's something that I work on all the time. And so I think that I am, you know, not the best at it, but I definitely have that skill. It's just like writing. It's something that you have to practice. And I feel like I have conversations now with people who I'm like, there's no way you're listening to me. Like, what are you hearing right now? <laughs> it like drives me crazy. Right. And so what do you think the benefit of having this active listening skill is? It's huge. It impacts relationships. Uh, business is based on relationship, but most people don't realize that communication is the foundation of relationship and listening is the foundation of communication. So yeah. it's, it's everything. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So I know you said that you started this because you wanted someone just to be like, that's a lot that you're going through. Sorry. Like that sucks. 
And that could probably kind of like fueled this whole this whole process. So in a business lens, what do you think like how can people actually start this act of listening and what does it look like in conversation? So I I teach what's what I call the core of listening. And so I'll just run through it really quick with you. It's the it's what's in my course. So it's the core of listening. It starts the C stands for it's an acronym. I don't love acronyms, but I feel like in this scenario, it really helps people remember what they need to do. And so it stands for calm, outcome, relate, and empathy. And mm-hmm. when you do those four things in in a conversation, in truly active listening, it makes a huge impact. Yeah, totally. Do you want to walk us through why each of those are important and kind of how they tie together? Sure. So before everybody thinks, well, listening starts with the other person, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It starts with you. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming into a conversation and you're not calm, you're not ready to listen to anyone. So that start, it, listening starts with you. You have to be calm. So that's the first thing. Outcome, what is it that you're hoping from this conversation? What, what is it that the other person needs? Or if you're, you know, coming to the conversation, what is it? What is it that the goal? What's the goal? A lot of people miss that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't, you know, it's one thing if, if the goal is, you know, we're going to figure out what to have for dinner. <laughs> that one's easy. But in a conversation that's a little bit deeper or further or business or whatever, sometimes a business meeting, sometimes that outcome's clear. But there are other times that it's really useful to define that first. And I encourage people to do that. Relate. Ooh, there's so much that goes into this. This is a really rich chapter in in what in my course. But just in a, in a nutshell, it's all the little things, right? It's all the little things that people think are well, think of when they think of listening. But I go into it in so much depth. And so it's the make sure the phone's put away. It's uh, which people are addicted to now. It's really hard for them. I mean, just even that one thing, like huh. you got to make sure you do it. Right. And, you know, the body language and open ended questions versus closed ended questions. I mean, there's a lot there. Okay. So the, and then move on to empathy. And so this is where the deepness of it all really happens. When you have empathy for somebody, you're really dialing into where they are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the empathy part is the difference between someone who's going to actually open up to you and someone who's going to just give you their surface reasons. Like, I'm thinking of some of the discovery calls I've had with people who want to work with me. And if I was all surface level and they were like, no, I actually don't have the budget. And I just said, okay, that'd be end of conversation there. But usually there's something deeper than just money, right? That comes with business. It's maybe like for podcasting, like they don't feel like they're going to have people to listen to them or they are nervous or not the expert or all of these things that are so common that if I wasn't listening, like actually listening and like trying to understand, I probably wouldn't have a business. Yeah. So right there, what you just described, that's asking the right question under the relate piece. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I love that. I love how they all tie together. And -hmm. something that actually came up in a podcast conversation I had probably over a year ago now is this girl who was talking about you know, she has a lot of kids in her life. And one of the things that someone said to one of the kids was like, are you listening to respond? Or are you listening to understand? That's a big difference. There's a big difference. difference. Do you want to talk a little bit about the difference between those two? So when somebody's really listening to understand, they're they're understanding that this is true and this is true. So my truth and your truth can both exist at the same time. When you're listening to respond, you're typically doing that in a defensive stance, trying to defend yourself and to say, you know, this is this is why I'm right. This is, and this is all, all the reasons why. There are two very, very, very different things. Yeah, yeah. And so when it comes to discovery calls, do you have any tips you can share? Like when someone maybe wants to work with us or... Um, maybe you're just on a connection call trying to network. Yeah, for those for those calls, I feel like it's important, first of all, to to be authentic and to show up as you. And so doing that work to ahead of like I just mentioned, it starts with you, right? So mm-hmm. making sure that you're calm before you go into those conversations, that's something I always do. Like even before this call, I was taking five minutes to just be in myself and to know that I'm ready to be all the way here with you. So that means that I'm ready to put aside whatever else is going on in my head and be here. 
when you do that for someone, it is a really powerful uh, experience for them typically because they know you're the only person that matters in this moment. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that people can tell. People can tell for sure. And you have such a calming energy to you, honestly. And so I think that's probably also why you've been successful in what you're doing because people you're not here to judge anyone, right? You don't give that appearance. You don't give that vibe to you, like your body language. You're just here to listen. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm not into judging people. I, I feel like everybody gets to be who they are and find their own way. And I really believe that you can't do your life wrong. And when you have that kind of understanding and mentality, so even if you're in a discovery call and, you know, somebody says, uh, you know, they're just not sure that's okay. If, if you're not that person for them right now, it's, they'll still find their way and there'll be another person for you. And you can trust that. I can trust that. That's yeah. a really powerful way to live. Yeah. And one of the things that we talked about the first time we connected and we're just chatting about what we both do is you were talking a little bit about how you find the people that you listen to and work with and kind of how what you do is different than therapy and all these other modalities of wellness. So when it comes to marketing and actually connecting with people, do you have any advice for for your business or for anyone who, you know, wants to start a business that's a little more unique and not as hard of? I was so thankful when I first started the business. I I reached out, you get credit right? Once you, I, I was registering the business with Google and they offered me free ad credit. So yeah. I, I called the guy and uh, I called up and I said, yeah, I'd like to spend my free ad credit. And the Google representative said to me, sorry, Google. <laughs> uh, but he said to me, don't, don't do this. Don't, don't spend any ad credit. You are so different. You won't be found. There's nobody mm -hmm. is searching for your business. So it's futile for you to do that. And so then that purging, was it? Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit like that fear part. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so that led me to then really brainstorm and think, okay, how am I going to be able to reach people to with what I'm doing? How, how do I, how do I connect with people? And so I started to do some podcasts. And so then I started to do more podcasts and I, there's a wonderful person. Her name is Renee. And I met her through the Adam Sutton Carson city. She's a mar She offers her service as a marketing mentor. And so that's how I, I went. She's terrific. I showed up and she gives so much back to the community. And I said, so how do I do this? <laughs> and, you know, we, we talked about ways different ways to leverage people's audiences. And so because advertising wasn't necessarily going to work for me, especially at the beginning, I had to learn, okay, how can I write blog posts for other people, be on other people's podcasts, be in their newsletters. Yeah. And just find all those different types of things to do. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I love that you were able to kind of put yourself out there because so in such a more personal way, right? Where podcasting is so personal and writing for people so personal. Ads are great, but I think the personal connections through different, you know, networking, I think podcasts are 100% networking, right? And so mm -hmm. that's awesome advice. That's really great advice. And I am very impressed about like your perseverance through that, because I think if a Google you know, representative was like, no one's searching for this. I'd be like, well, let me prove you wrong. But also I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much where I was. I was, but I had such a really strong understanding that what I have to offer is important. And, yeah. and the, and it kept being validated. Each conversation that I had, each networking conversation where I would talk about what I would do, the other person would go, wow, that's really different and that's so needed. I've never, over and over and over again, I hear, I've never heard of anybody doing something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And I went to a networking event and a lot of people were like, oh, I have this business idea, but I like don't know where to start or if people are interested. And I'm like, okay, I just met someone who, you know, I was talking about you and I was like, and she did this and she's like doing so well, like you could start truly any business and the right people will find you as long as you put yourself out there. 
I had a, I was in a mastermind group with a gentleman named Larry. He's a business coach. I met him really early on when he was just starting out. And he, he said in one of his group calls that you're probably too young to remember the pet rocks. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> sold pet rocks. I do remember <laughs> this. Yeah. Pet rocks? And he's like, if somebody can go out and sell pet rocks, you can do absolutely anything. And I have to tell you how encouraging that was for me. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is true. There'll be, there's somebody for everybody. And so if it's, I'm not pet rocks, I'm not, I'm, I'm not wanting to do that, but I would love to make an impact in the world with helping others to understand what it means to really listen. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is <laughs> that's so funny. I absolutely love that. I haven't thought about it like that, but yeah, there's someone who sells rocks that you could find on the side of the road and makes money and people were eating it up right and so lots of money you know right and the and how did they do that so then the question becomes okay so what was it that they did they created excitement and joy around the rocks and they they made it fun for themselves and they made it fun for other people and so that's really really powerful when you stop and think about that yeah, it really is. I mean, I see all of these professional brands out here like Duolingo and Ryanair, just two examples that I see all over TikTok that their TikToks are basically memes, jokes. It's hilarious. It's Gen Z humor, but they are so popular and people love them for being unique and those type of things people love. People are attracted to that. Yeah. I, now I have to go look at them up. I haven't, I, I am, I do have a TikTok account, but I haven't ever run across those ads. <laughs> yes, Duolingo and Ryanair okay. are hilarious. <laughs> they are two of my favorite companies to follow just because they obviously have Gen Z media teams and it is mm. so funny, <laughs> but a little <laughs> off topic. So for podcasters, listening and responding are a lot to like take in, especially maybe like the first time you meet someone where maybe you don't know anything about their story and you're not sure where the conversation is going to go. How do you, do you have any tips for longer conversations of keeping engaged and keeping listening? I actually have a free course out there. It's called Runaway Freight Train Brain. And it's actually for people that struggle with that part. Because if your mind goes too too fast and is has trouble staying on track with a conversation that gets longer, I have some really practical tips. I'll just share one thing that's in there. And and that is the importance of taking note taking. You'll notice I have a pen in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And the reason for that is if, if I do get sidetracked, it's, it's a great way. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can just be one word, but that'll be enough, at least for me. And I find for most other people who have, who've tried this out, they also say it, it makes an impact and it helps. Okay. Awesome. I'll put that in the show notes where people can go and download it because I think when you are podcasting, people can tell if you're actually listening or if you are sticking to a script that you have in your head of, oh, I'm going to ask this question. And regardless of what the answer is, I'm going to ask the next next question. And there are some, I always say there's like really two types of podcasts. There's conversation podcasts, and then there's Q&A podcasts. Both have audiences, both are great, but they're just different audiences. So they are. I, yeah. I know that a lot of people I work with are more conversation. And I think that is better for I don't know, easy listening or something like that. And so I think a lot of people will find value in that freebie that you have. Yeah, I hope so. I, I think there's value in it for sure. So yeah, thanks for sharing that in the notes. That'll be good. Yeah, of course. You also have a course that is coming out. So you want to tell us about it? I, I do have a course. It's called Listen Your Way to Deeper Relationships. And so the the, um, the essence really is it's possible to improve your relationship simply through listening. It really, really is. But I helped, I mentioned the core. And so it goes really in depth into all of that. Listening mistakes, I go through that. There's a, there's a lot there. There's assessments to help. There's resources. So anyway, I'm super excited. I, I got done writing that course and I, and I said, this is good. I'm so proud of it. And that's, for me, that's very unique and unusual. Like I, the, probably the last thing I was really super proud of that I created was my kids. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it was really powerful for me to, yeah. to finish this piece. It's a 21 day uh, master course. And so fi in 15 minutes a day, um, people can, you don't have to spend a long time. It doesn't have to be, you got to do the work, but it doesn't, 
it doesn't have to be that intense, but 15 minutes a day, you'll notice a difference for sure. Yeah, 21 that's, days. That's awesome. And congrats. That's so touching. I absolutely love that. Where can people find that? And really, who is it for? Because the first thing that pops into my head is like a bunch of women are going to buy it for their husbands, but. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. And that could be, I think, honestly, if people go through it together, that would be amazing. Who is it for? It's, it's written for the people that really want their kids to know that no matter what they'll listen. It's, it's written for the the wife that really wants that deeper connection with her husband and knows that by by practicing and learning these skills herself, she can teach him even if he doesn't want to sit down and take the course, right? Mm -hmm. So by going through it yourself, by learning it yourself, you will automatically start modeling it in your life. And when you model it in your life, it comes back to you. This is what's so absolutely incredible about listening is when you do it well and those around you, it it, they pick up on it. They, they begin to understand and do what you're doing because they feel how good that feels. Yeah. People remember how you make them feel more than anything else. And so I've been saying, if someone doesn't listen to me and I can tell that their mind is in a million different places, of course, ADHD plays a role in this, other things like that. But if there's no way you're listening to me right now, I can't. I just don't <laughs> feel valued in that conversation. Right. Exactly that. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. So that's awesome that you have this course. I will also put that in the show notes. And I'm super excited for people to go through that. Somebody said, oh my gosh, this would be so good for coaches that are working with people. Yeah. Uh, they said that it'd be good for, for couples. One person said, oh my gosh, Deb, you're in my head now when I talk to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. And well, I'm sure yeah. the kids appreciate it. I'm sure the kids definitely appreciate it. They're like, oh, yes, go Deb. Well, I mean, in a, in a good way. I mean, right. It's, it's a good way. So if it, if it brings somebody up short and they're like, ah, oh, I was about to make this mistake and I, and they catch themselves, that's terrific. That makes me so excited and happy for sure. One person is also a business owner and she took the course and she's like, oh, I can see how this is going to impact my business life. Oh, so that's powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. I love how you're helping people in such a unique, but necessary way where maybe people don't think that they need it, but it's a skill that I'm sure you, even as a professional, you're still developing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> There's, there is no such thing. And when we're not perfect, then then there's repair work to do, right? That, that's a whole other course in and of itself that I hope to one day write. But I think that when we truly, truly, truly make an effort, even when we miss it, it gives us the opportunity to come back and and do better. But ho hopefully those misses will be less as a result of the work we do. You know, none of us were taught. I'm, were you taught in school? Never. 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 No. So I wasn't until I got into my master's program. Most other people that I've met, I've asked that question to. Only 2%, according to listen.org, have ever gone through any active listening training. So if any of listeners out there and you have, congratulations. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to <laughs> yeah. know what, what was in your training. <laughs> Or where they went to school. I mean, I went to school for journalism and still didn't learn that. I was literally out here interviewing people and never, ever was talked about active listening with. Wow. So, yeah, I just had yeah. a word of my own. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that that's that's just staggering. We're doing our disservice to our kids, to our nation, to our whole. Yeah, okay. I, uh, that's a soapbox for me. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I can feel no. it. <laughs> the last question I ask all of my guests to kind of wrap up the episode is, what are three action steps that the audience can take away from this conversation and start doing in their life today? So um, definitely stay calm in your conversations. So that that is just um, when when you do that, it's it changes the dynamics of so much. I have a resource too that's that's free and out there. How to rescue a sideways conversation. I'll I don't think I sent that to you yet. I'll send that to you as well. That might be helpful to your listeners, because sometimes. The conversation you're going along really well but then the call what happens when you're in the middle of the conversation and then the calm goes like what do you, then what do you do and so there's help for that there too thank you so much and you are on instagram tiktok anywhere else that people should find you youtube if you i mean pretty much any channel that we're on facebook yeah wherever wherever you hang out we're we're probably there Awesome. And then they can find that course through links in your bios or do you have a website? Yeah, links in the bio and or hearingoutlifedrama.com. Awesome. Perfect. I'll put all of this in the show notes. And this was so fun. 
talking to you and listening to you. So thank you so much for all your action steps of how to listen better, how to have more meaningful conversations. I think that it will really help anyone with a podcast, but also with a business or truly anyone who encounters other people in their life. <laughs> Daily. Yeah. If you're walking on the earth. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So really everyone should listen to this. Well, thank you so much, Deb. Thank you, Haley. Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started with your business today. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Employee to Boss podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Remember, a little progress each day leads to big results. We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out EspressoPodcastProduction.com.